up a chair and join me today Out in my workshop I'm tinkering away Wand above staring down on me Wonder what my next project will be Working on my Johnson, my Mercury Mark 10 Firing up my Starcraft to fish again Grab your friends and your dog is too To watch Tim's Workshop on my YouTube Hey, welcome to Tim's Workshop Back on the uh, 1965 Evan Rude outboard motor I do a little a uh, little more on this motor I just noticed something that the ends of these like it slid on the pavement or something it's it's a little ground off right there so yeah we'll uh we're gonna have to touch those up make them look uh better than uh, the way they look right now but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take the carburetor off and clean it there was another thing that was concerning me is where where's the pee hole on this thing you know when it's running well I looked at other videos and let me turn the camera down here I looked at other videos and there's the holes down here and that's where the water sprays out from the water pump well, when I had this in the barrel up there, I had the water clear up here, so all I was seeing is bubbles and stuff coming out. So, really, you don't want to come up any higher than this down here as far as the water level. And that way you can see if it's peeing uh, properly. You can see where uh, grease or something's coming out from here. Uh, there's like four bolts here. Right, and you could take this whole leg off from the um, uh, transom clamp swivel, and you could pack that with grease. I don't see a grease zert on here. It'd be nice if they there was a grease zert that you could grease this thing when it needs greasing, but I don't see one. So I guess they just expect you to take this off and do it the hard way I guess <laughs> there's, you know it's a simple motor but there's stuff like that that just you know it doesn't make any sense I could put a grease fitting on it you know as long as it was uh, out of the way where it wouldn't get knocked off yeah they uh, slid this on the ground it looked like <laughs> you know the compression's good on the motor but this this head is like really needs a the whole motor needs a, to be painted to tell you the truth it used to be this color normally when you see something like that you would think oh this thing overheated you know but if it overheated it still runs pretty good you know why well, I mean once I get the carburetor cleaned out so I don't know exactly what was going on there. Man, this thing is hard to turn. Definitely got to take that apart and grease it. Oh, somebody put the uh, just a wire on here instead of a, a cotter pin for this this piece here. Let the motor can lock. There's a little chunk missing here, so we can now. Uh, we can fix that. What else? All right. Well, let's get going on the uh, on this. There's uh, there's this pipe here that connects to the front of the carburetor. I guess it's a it's a baffle. And uh, there's a couple, you know, just a couple seven sixteenths uh, nuts here. Uh, spring from the uh, from this so we got to disconnect the spring here that all come off together and I think that's it yeah just uh, a disconnect the spring disconnect these uh, two nuts and unscrew this baffle 
and to get the baffle off it's just a couple screws here there's a gasket here and a gasket between the carburetor and the motor and there we go that's uh, not much to it all right well let's get going on it hey if you're new to the channel please subscribe leave comments hit the notification bell and if you like give me a like hit the hand thing and let your friends and family know about my videos too so let's get going on this uh, 65 Ebenrude outboard motor vintage <laughs> all right here we go we'll start with this baffle back here oh there was another thing too when I had the tank with the longer hose hooked up for gravity feed might not have been the best idea for keeping the engine running I'm going to clean the carburetor anyway but I make sure when I do the uh, second barrel test that I have the tank back on with a just a short hose like it's supposed to be hooked up to the carb because that uh, that could have affected it as well all right well I might as well take the baffle completely off Mm, those, somebody really put those screws on there. There's another thing I'm going to do too. These little uh, little boxes for putting uh, parts in work great. But when I was at Fred Meyer, they have a rack that will fit up here on the wall. It comes with those kind of uh, boxes. So that would be a good spot to put uh, put those little things up there and that way they're up off this table you know and they're up on the wall so i think that'll be good i think i could just do it on one side and then the other side maybe a couple little shelves or something to put stuff on but i got these shelves pretty well loaded up with uh, stuff like i say i'm gonna have to start selling motors to make room for more motors <laughs> okay well, there's the baffle little screen that came popping off here I thought it was a gasket but it's actually a screen that goes on here like that so it's cool let's see if I can get the spring off of here there we go have to use some needle nose to uh, put it back on all right, well, I need a 7 16 uh, wrench. I think I'll get the camera pointing up, pointing down on this thing. Wow, those nuts were on there awful hard, that's for sure. I'm not sure if this, uh, this carburetor's ever been taken off. Looks like I'm going to have to take this thing off of here. Taking this screw loose. There we go. Okay. Now I think I can get in there with the uh, the open end to finish taking this uh, nut off. There we go. Yay! Okay. Get this carburetor off of here. There we go. There's the spring I was telling you about. And this piece over here. Goes like that. Gasket looks good. But we're going to take it apart and clean it. Choke. This is a choke lever. Has like a piece of metal that acts like a spring tension on it. It doesn't have a spring, it just has this metal clip. So you can pull it out. 
with the knob, if you have the knob on it. I took the knob off, but there we go. Yeah, now it's closed. And now it's open. Pretty simple carb. The gasket's on this side. It looks pretty old, but it doesn't look like it's defective at all. So we might be able to reuse it as long as it doesn't uh, doesn't leak. If it doesn't leak, then we're good. Yeah, we'll do the uh, the fuel leak test that I do, where I hook up uh, a hose to the to the carburetor, flip it up and down, put a little pressure on it, make sure it's. Uh, not leaking before we put it back on and then we'll check out the lower end on the uh, on the motor too I still want to make sure that the, the water pumps working properly so I'll put a my uh, thermometer on the uh, on the engine while it's running and see uh, what how hot it gets even though if it's uh, spraying the water out we just want to check it to make sure. All right. Now it's not horrible. Definitely have a jet in in this passage here, so that has to come off. The uh, float. I need to dump this uh, fuel out of here. Um, floats cork. Wow, that's cool. Gasket. Gasket looks okay. Not sure about over here. Doesn't look torn. There's a tear right there, but it's not it's not affecting anything. So I think that we can get by with that gasket and dump this fuel out. Yeah, everything looks good. It's level. Looks like it's working properly. We'll get in there and clean everything out though. We'll take the, uh, the seat out. We'll take the jets out. We'll take the Venturi uh, part out has another gasket or something right there. I think it's a gasket, I'm not sure. But we'll disassemble this, put it in my uh, Berryman cleaner. Let's take this out first. Huh, must be a millimeter, that's interesting. 65 they went to millimeter apparently 11 millimeter okay yep there's a, a jet down inside there a little uh, gasket that's on here it's still 11 millimeter okay that wasn't all that tight Unscrew this. Oh, that's pretty dirty. Yeah. Definitely needs that clean, that's for sure. The needle. Needle looks good. No jet down in uh, down inside there. Got this one up here though. Let's see if we can get this loose. Yep, the Venturi definitely needs to be clean, that's for sure. Okay. Gonna get this pin out of here. There we go. Pull the pin out. There we go. That was easy. Easy, 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 easy. <laughs> 
pull that out. There's the, uh, the pin. Pin looks good. Sometimes those things are so tight that they strip. And yeah, man, if they start stripping, give up. Decided to use something that was a little bigger for water. Okay. Okay. So, Kim Dip Berryman. So you rinse this out, just like that. Okay. There's a jet inside there. I tried to get it out, but uh, I gave up. So when when they start stripping on you, just leave them alone, get a wire, and just clean it out the best you can, and then put it in uh, your carb cleaner or berryman or whatever. I use both. And this thing here, you use a carb cleaner and a wire and go through all these little holes. And then you're good to go. All right. So take these back in. I use a uh, Air, like a computer keyboard, uh, air in a can, compressed air. And I blow these things uh, out. And then I uh, use carb cleaner and <clears throat> blow them out again and then they're good to go on uh, the cork because it has um, um, what do you call it a, a clear sealant on the cork you don't put them in the berryman you just clean them best you can you could probably use the card cleaner a little bit on it you know it'd be fine but really it's clean enough and then uh, the this because it has this on you could probably take this off but and then I thought this was plastic. It's not, it's metal. So yeah, you can put this in the berryman, but there's an O-ring here too. So you don't want, you try to avoid putting O-rings in berryman. You just want to use carb cleaner and clean it the best you can. So I left it out, both of these. Put all this back together. All right, here we go. Put the uh, needle pin seat in. Look how clean that spring came out. Looks like copper. <laughs> that Berryman works really good. Okay, and the needle. Slide that on there. Okay, like that, and then put this down in the hole, like that, let's uh, start it, okay, and then flip it upside down, that looks pretty good, that looks good. Okay, now thread this one in. This is the uh, 
I call it the uh, Venturi. Screw that down until it stops. Okay. It's just poking its head through there on the inside. So that's good. This is actually the drain plug for draining the fuel is what that is. And this guy, this is the low speed. Screw this in until it stops. There it goes, right there. Then you screw this in. And tighten it. Okay. Back this back out. Three quarters of a turn. Put the gasket on. I think I'll spray uh, some down there because the high speed comes in through here, through here. So it's like an air mixture uh, hole is what it is. So that's why this is a high speed. So we want to make sure this hole from there to there is open. So I'll uh, just push a little carb cleaner through it. Okay, yep, it's clear all the way through. Let's put this on and tighten them. Got the carburetor all back together. Gonna put it on the motor. I decided to take this apart to see what's inside it. I noticed on the diagram that it comes apart. Well, not much. <laughs> A little bit of oil on it. A little bit of dirt in there. Well, put it back together. Alrighty, well, okay, there's one. Okay, so I'm going to get this thing on. Now, the uh, needle nose, get this spring back on. Guess I better get this attached first. Alrighty, well, got that together. 
Uh, next thing is I'm going to take this uh, lower unit apart, get some grease in here, check the uh, lower unit for lube. Let's uh, get this thing broke loose. So it's 10 millimeter. Let's see if we can get these loose without having to use heat. Hmm, maybe not. Okay, there's one. Okay, two. That's not nice thing about uh, small motors is m most people don't run them in salt water. So if this had been run in salt water, it would have been pretty bad to, as far as taking it apart. These are stainless. So that's good. I got to get these two out for the cover to come off. It won't come off unless I get these two bolts out. All right, let's see if I can get this thing off now. Oh, there we go. Yep, oh my gosh. Well, there's definitely grease in there. Not quite sure why it's so hard to turn though. We'll find out. Oh, there is a Zert. It's right behind there. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm taking those other two bolts on this plate, taking them off. Because this whole piece should come away from this and then we got all this grease to clean up which we'll do okay now we got the one on the other side the head assembly completely off okay There we go, just like that. We'll clean it up. <clears throat> That's another question. How'd they get the seals on there? They had to stretch them over the top of this or this piece comes off, I don't know. Pretty cool. So, Here's the gasket. If I can carefully take it off without wrecking it. There we go. We got that off. Get this all cleaned up. Now that's where the water jacket goes, right in there. So we just got to get it all cleaned up and that way when we put this back on we make sure that that water pipe is in there the way it's supposed to be. And that pumps the water up into this cavity, up into the head to keep it cool. We know where the water goes now <laughs> to, to keep the, the motor cool. Yeah, when I'm done with this, this thing will spin very nice. Well, I got the uh, spindle all cleaned up. Got the uh, the O-rings cleaned up. I found uh, the easiest thing to use is a screwdriver and gasoline, and it worked pretty good on both both uh, deals there. This washer is a sp split washer, just like the uh, the sleeves. They're split too. The O-rings aren't, but apparently they were able to get these O-rings over the top of this end down here. So yeah, 
Got those clean. The only thing that's left now is the uh, the transom uh, side of it. So I'm going to get that cleaned up and then uh, we'll be ready to put it all back together. So that's it on this video cleaning up the uh, lower leg spindle and the carburetor on the 65 Evinrude 3 horsepower outboard motor. So next we're going to start putting the uh, lower leg back on the transom mount, uh, get that all back together, get it greased up good, hit the zert, you know, make sure that the uh, zert is pumping in grease. Uh, the kind of grease I'm going to be using, uh, let me find it here. Water resistant marine grease, stay lube. So we're going to hook that up. I got a uh, actual pneumatic uh, grease gun that I can hook uh, hook that up to. Try it out. See how that works. I've never used it before. <laughs> so it was one of my father-in-law's leftover tools that I uh, inherited. So anyway, we're going to uh, put that together. The carb spin clean, everything. So uh, I'm not going to take the lower unit off yet, you know, for the water pump. All I'm going to do is uh, take out the plugs, uh, drain the uh, lower lube fluid out of it, put some new fluid in it. And then we're going to put it back in the barrel and do a barrel test uh, again. Now that I know where the water is supposed to come out on the lower leg, uh, make sure that the water's uh, pumping good. I'm going to put my uh, infrared uh, uh, heat thermometer on the motor because uh, I have the lower part of the, I still have the cowling off. And uh, keep an eye on how hot that uh, motor gets. Um, I did that on the um, Johnson here. And I did the same thing but out on a lake and I only got up to like 107 degrees just measuring it on the uh, on the side of the motor. So I'll do the same with the Evinrude and if it's about, you know, ballpark, same same deal, then we know the water pump's working good. Visually seeing the water pumping out and then taking the temperature on it too. So uh, if you like the video, please subscribe, leave comments, hit the notification bell. Give me a like, hit the old hand thing, and let your friends and family know about my videos too. Alright, so until next time, we'll see ya.